children. So let us start with the next session of biology class. That is uh, 8th class, 3rd day. Okay. So let us see transport system in plants. Okay. Under this topic, transport system in plants. See, our today's topic is transport of water in xylem methods. Okay. Transport of water by xylem within the plant. Okay. See. Transport of water with the xylem fish. So you already know materials is being transported with the materials is being transported with the man body by using a two important tissues that is xylem and Okay, so these two terminologies, the xylem and phloem tissues are together called as vascular bundle. Vascular bundle. And they are also together called as conducting tissues. Conducting tissues. What do you mean by this conducting tissue? Conducting tissues in simple words. This tissue helps in conducting the water and mineral salts as well as food materials from one part of the plant body to the other part of the plant. So, you already know, from the help of roots, the water uh, mineral salts is being absorbed and the water and mineral salts is being reached into the topmost area of the plant that is leaves. And you know, leaves helps in photosynthesis process, yes. Food is manufactured in the leaves, that's why they are called as food factories. Food factories are a plant, and that food which is prepared in the living has to be transported within the plant body by using another dish called as soil tissue. Isn't it? Now, here we have to understand how water is transported with the help of xylem tissue within the plant. See, already we discussed absorption of water by two types. See, these are the roots, this is the plant body, these are the leaves or branches or stem or twigs. Okay? Now, these roots are deeply penetrated into the soil. This is it, soil particles. And along with the soil particles, what? Water. If the um, soil is completely water, the water get, gets absorbed by the roots. So here, yeah, the absorption of water by root hair is known as sap. Absorption of the water by roots is known as sap. Here, yeah, the movement of water molecules takes place from the soil particles to the roots. Here, yeah, what is happening? Movement of water molecules takes place. So there is movement of water molecules from the root within the xylem, xylem vessel. That is called Scent of sap. Movement of water molecules. How the movement of water molecules take place? By absorption of the roots. With the help of the root layers, the water gets absorbed and the water is supplied to each other part of the plant body. Now, within the plant body only, the water gets supplied. With the help of the xylem tissue. Now, if the water enters like this, the Actually, it is going in opposite direction towards the X gravity. So, in order to push the water from the normal conditions to the unfavorable conditions, normal conditions in the sense towards the X gravity. If anything is moving towards X gravity, it is so simple. But it has to be pushed in opposite direction. The water has to be pushed in upward direction to supply the water to each and every part of the body. Isn't it? Now, here, in order to push the water to upper area of the plant, okay, here a great pressure is required. Okay, here, the water column within the xylem vessels exits some pressure to pull the water column to the topmost area of the plant. So, that pressure which is exerted, exerted by the root, the xylem vessels is known as root pressure. 
root will exert some sort of pressure in order to push the water from the, the deeper layers to the roots to the tip of the uh, leaves. Isn't it? Okay. Now, this root pressure phenomenon is very, very important phenomenon which is designed in plants so that with the help of that root pressure, the water column in the roots is being pushed to the each and every part of the world. You even can see very tall and tall trees. Very tall trees. There also the water is being supplied. You, you can see even the red sandalwood. Very tall trees. Even though they are tall. The, out, the topmost uh, area of the leaf is also captured. That means the water level is also reached up to the topmost area. All because of this is root pressure. Okay? And with the help of this root pressure, what happens? The water level will be moving upward now. Within this, what happens? A gap occurs. Or you can say, a pull creates in the xylophysis. This pull is nothing but transpirational pull. Transpirational pull. What do you mean by transpirational pull? With the absorption of the water, when it creates, the inner component, blue pressure, the water is being pushed to the upper areas of the plant body. Yeah, pull is created. Pull is nothing but tired. The water column is created. That pull is nothing but transpirational pull. Okay? And this is what is being compared to the water component. And this is about transpiration of water within the design. Okay, next, another topic under this is transportation of the food in food. Transportation of food in flow of fish. Here, in order to understand this, here we need to perform, I mean, I'll tell you one experiment so that easily you can understand. Now, first you have to understand uh, which part, I mean, which tissue helps in supplying the food to each and every part of the body. Good. Here, how food gets up, uh, transported into the plant body. To understand that, I'll tell you one small experiment. Okay? For that, what experiment is done here? We will see this. First, uh, normally, you know, bark of a tree, yes, bark of a tree consists of dead cells, very thick, isn't it? You know, uh, a fig. A fig is nothing but it's an insect. A fig, especially, this is an insect, which specially feeds on plant food materials. How it will be? Just you try to understand. Here, this aphid contains a long proboscis. You know, from mosquito, not to suck the blood there, it has long proboscis, a long uh, thick needle like structure. The same way, this aphid insect also contains a long bead like structure. It's not bead actually, it is called as proboscis. Okay? To suck the blood. How for the uh, what you say for mosquito for sucking the blood, uh, it has a long proboscis, not the same way for epid also, it has a long proboscis to suck the plant juices, plant food materials from the plant board. How it will suck the, by sitting on the tree, by piercing its long proboscis into the plant, it sucks the food materials. So, in order to prove how food is being transported, we are taking the example of epid. Now what you have to do is, first of all, let allow the aphid to sit on the plant and suck the food materials. Now what it will, it will do slowly, it starts sucking the food materials. Now in this moment, you have to catch hold the aphid and you have to cut the proboscis. You have to separate the proboscis from the aphid. Now after separating this proboscis from the aphid, now, easily you can find out the food materials are supplied or not. Now, you have to take out this slowly, take out this proboscis from the plant body. You just take to this uh, proboscis to the lab and just put it under the microscope and observe it. You can see in the 
long process of the effect, some good particles are running in this. So with this experiment, we can easily do that lower tissue helps in transporting the submetals. Okay? Now one more example, one more experiment is also given in your textbook. This is a normal example here, uh, live example. Here textbook, experimental example if you see, here also very simple. You have to take one long quadrant um, plant, quadrant plant you select and then stem of the quadrant um, plant, both the stem contains what? Both the tissues of lawyer and xylem, they both run parallelly within the plant body, is it? Now, in order to prove whether the lawyer supplies the good materials or not, here what you have to do is, first of all, see in the textbook page number 21, you need to remove the lower surface of the stem. A portion of the uh, stem part has to be removed. Okay? And you can see, and leave the complete setup for a few days. And you know, which part of the plant prepares good materials? Leaf. So from the leaf, the upper part of the uh, plant body, here some kind of food is accumulated here. Why? Because the lower part of the stem is being removed. Because of this removal of lower part of the stem, the food is not completely supplied to each and every part of the world. Because here there is no flowing issue. Isn't it? That's why the water on the, wherever on the um, bark of a tree or you can say the stem part is it? After that only the food has been accumulated. Okay? Now even with this also you can easily understand. The food is being supported or uh, transported with the help of a lawyer issue. Here it is the experiment you see, he has taken an important plant. He has removed a portion of the stem, not completely. Not completely, you have to just a portion where it contains lawyer and other tissues. And here you, have, you might be getting one question. Now, how can we know that this? portion of the plant has xylem and foliage. Mostly, you know, my, the major bulky quantity of the stem is being occupied by the xylem and foliage issue. So, if you remove the portion of the uh, stem, that definitely contains lower and xylem issues. Okay, clear? Yeah, this is an experiment. And here, one more important topic that is transcription. We already know, we already know the importance of transcription. It is nothing but the evaporation of the water from the plant body is known as transpiration. Here broadly if you see, transpiration is classified into three types. One is stomatal transpiration, second one is cuticular transpiration, and the third one is lenticular and bark transpiration. Okay. First of all, what is stomatal transpiration, cuticular transpiration, and lenticular and bark transpiration we have promised. Simple here. Stomata, you know, they are considered as the lungs of a leaf. Hmm. What do you mean the lungs of a leaf? Yeah. What is the role of lungs? Helps in the exchange of gas. Here, the stomata also acts like a lung of a leaf. That means it helps in the exchange of gas. Not only gases, here, excess amount of water, the, the water which is present in the plant body is also being transported, I mean, transcreated through this stomata. If the water from plant body escapes through stomata, then such type of transpiration is known as stomata transpiration. If the through stomata the water is evaporated, then that phenomenon is called transpiration. Stomata transpiration. Then second one is cuticular transpiration. What is cuticle? Upon the epidermis, a thick layer called cuticle is present. That cuticle helps in protecting the plant body from the external environment. Okay? Now, if the evaporation of the water takes place through this cuticle, then that is called cuticular transpiration. Okay? Next, lenticular transpiration. Lentis, lentices are nothing but they are present on the stem. How a leaf contains stomata of the exchange of gases and also the sending of this water in the form of water vapor. Here on the stem also, small holes are present. That small holes makes the stem to breathe. That means to exchange the gas. Oh, so, 
if the water escapes from the man body through this lenticles, then such type of transpiration is called as lenticular transpiration. And you know, bark also is a thick supporting tissue that is protecting the man from the external environment that is called bark. The water escapes from the bark. If the water evaporates from the bark, then that is called bark transpiration. Okay, is this clear? Simple, stomatal transpiration, cuticular transpiration, lenticular and bark transpiration. Stomatal transpiration means if the transpiration takes place through stomata, that is called stomatal transpiration. If the transpiration takes place through lenticles, lenticles are nothing but the small holes present on the stem, especially. Stomata will be present on the leaves. On the stem, lenticles are present. If the water evaporates from the lenticles, then that is called lenticular transpiration. Okay, then bark transpiration is simple. If the water escapes from the bark, then it is called bark transpiration. And just now we already discussed about transpiration of wool. See, uh, within the plant body, uh, the xylem exerts pressure to pull the water to the topmost area. Here, a pool is created. With the xylem and the factor is nothing but transpiration film. Next, factors affecting the transpiration, rate of transpiration. What do you mean by factors affecting the rate of transpiration? That means what are the causes? That means in that the first one you see here, open page number 22 and see here factors affecting the rate of transpiration is more happening right side than in diffuse light of darkness. During daytime you can say. During daytime, the rate of transpiration will be more when compared to the night. That means if the intensity of light is falling down, the rate of transpiration also will be coming down. If the intensity of light is more, the rate of transpiration will be more. Next, there is an increase in the rate of transpiration at high temperature. A general phenomenon. If during summer season, even our body also undergoes dehydration. Lot of water is required. Same way for plants also, more amount of water is evaporated. During high temperature also, the rate of transpiration will be high. If the temperature is normal, the rate of transpiration is also normal. If the temperature is very high, the rate of transpiration is also high. And the third point is if moving air current increases the loss of water from the leaves. It in turn increases the rate of transpiration. High speed will causes closure of stomata, which reduces the rate of transpiration. That means the wind goes with great pressure, also the rate of transpiration affects. Okay. Then the third one, thickness of the cuticle and the level of stomata affects the rate of transpiration. Very, very important. Thickness of the cuticle and also the number of presence of stomata also affects the rate of transpiration. That means you can say normally size of the plant. Size of the plant also affects the rate of transpiration. Then high humidity in the air reduces the rate of transpiration or the outward diffusion of the water vapors across the stomata reduces. High humidity in the air reduces the rate of transpiration as well. The humidity is more. The rate of transpiration is less or more severe. The transpiration of the outward diffusion of the water vapor across the stomata decreases. Stomatal exchange no. So stomatal the capacity also decreases, meanwhile the rate of transmission also it decreases. Okay? That means indirectly or directly what we are saying is stomata, the number of presence of stomata definitely affects the rate of transmission. The importance of transpiration, why what is the main use of transpiration in plants? Actually, I will ask you a question. Normally, if you see in desert plants, already Desert plants will go up, they are permanently water locked the conditions. That means the uh, availability of water will be less. But the, in the same way, if the rate of transmission is more in desert plants, what happens? Definitely it affects the plant body. Isn't it? That's why if you see uh, mostly what plants will be doing, you know, in order to escape from this transmission, they will modify their Plant bodies. Example, take the ape. Especially through stomata, the transpiration occurs. 
very effectively. So in order to escape this affecting conditions, the leaf have been modified. Modified means what changing? To escape from this branch. How they change? Maybe like a spine. Okay. The spine structure like this. So that they can escape from the branch. Okay. Then see. Uh, leads to the conservation for you. cooling effect uh, dissolve some uh, 5 to 6 points at the to you in products of uh, aspiration plants so to follow this you know completed today's topic today what shall we discuss uh, what did we discuss here transport of water into xylem ascent of sap okay transportation of food in the poem then transpiration then factors affecting the rate of transpiration and importance of transpiration in plants. Transpiration in plants. Okay? So tomorrow what you have to do is just follow this experiment. Of page number 21 you see, an experiment is developed. That experiment you have to learn and then just close your book and without seeing your own friend. Okay? Self-test. Do that. Come with a prepared experiment. Read this complete activity thoroughly. Okay. And this diagram also you have to draw in your notebook. First read thoroughly and then close the book and start writing. Okay. That's all. Tomorrow's your work is that only. Okay. Transport of food in diagram and poem and uh, transport of uh, what in the diagram is. Okay. So my transportation all definition for you. First simple tomorrow what you have to do in this case here in page number 21 you have an activity that you learn and then close the textbook and just keep open a notebook and start writing this then after stomata translation to be done and some terminology are also there you that terminology you just learn and talk okay that's all 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 let us continue the previous session for tomorrow and for the next slash, okay, that's it. Thank you.